Today we're going to be graphing rational function. Rational functions are any function that looks like um, a fraction or anything that can be written as a fraction. That's what a rational number is. And our rational functions um, here are going to have fractions which um, will give us um, an issue or that poses a problem. And that problem is the fact that there is potentially a spot where it's undefined. And that undefined area is going to cause an, an asymptote, a vertical asymptote. So we go through steps. Um, as we did before. It doesn't necessarily have to be done in this order, um, but it's kind of an easy order to follow. So we need to factor it if possible. I can't do that on this first one. Then I'll find any holes. Holes happen if I can cancel out a factor. And it turns out on this first one I can't cancel out a factor. Then I'll find my zeros by setting the numerator equal to zero. So I'll do um, 3x plus 2 equals zero. And um, that's 3x equals negative 2, and x equals negative 2 thirds. So these are my zeros. And so my zero is at negative 2 thirds, comma, zero. Next thing I'll do is find my y-intercept. That's I find by replacing all the x's with zero. Basically, it's f of zero. That's the y-intercept, f of zero. So that's 3 times 0 plus 2 over 0 minus 4, that ends up being negative 1 half, and we plot that as a point 0 comma negative 1 half. Next up, I find my vertical asymptotes. I set the denominator equal to 0, um, so that's the bottom, x minus 4 equals 0, that's a vertical asymptote. That's at x equals 4, and that's a line. There's a difference between a 0 and an asymptote. Zeros are points. Y-intercepts are points. Vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes are lines. And so my horizontal asymptote will be the last thing that I look for in this, and that is found by taking the limit as x approaches infinity. I take it to the lead terms, 3x over x, and reduce it. That leaves me with 3, so I'll graph that as y equals 3. So now I'm going to go ahead and put this all together on my graph. And a lot of times when I start to put it together, it feels like it's not enough information, but really it, it, it will be. So this is negative 2 thirds, 0, 0, negative 1 half. I have an asymptote here over here at 4, just a sketch, another asymptote here at 3. So this is what happens. I know these two points have to connect. And I also know that the end behavior on the left has to approach that. Um, that horizontal asymptote, because that's what horizontal asymptotes are, um, and behavior. And then on the right, it can't come back up through here because I don't have another opening for it. That shows up as a zero. I only have one place to cross the axis, and that's that one zero I found. There was only one of them. And so this comes down over here. Now for the next part, it's got another region. In, in each region of the graph, I've got a left region and a right region. Sometimes I'll have a left, a middle, and a right. But over here in the right region, either it goes up on the top or it goes down on the bottom. Well, it can't be in this bottom spot because there's no opening for it. So this will have to approach the asymptote, the horizontal asymptote on the far right, and it'll approach the vertical asymptote in the middle. So the general, um, generally what's going to happen is on each side of your vertical asymptote, the graph is going to approach the vertical asymptote. And if the denominator does not repeat, like x minus 4, x minus 4, or whatever it is, repeat twice, it's going to always go in opposite directions. And you can check by doing a couple test points. I can get really close to 4 on the left, like plug in 3.999 and see where it's headed. It's going to be negative. And plug in 4.001, and that one's going to be positive. And so I'll know that um, it should approach that on that side. But that's typically what's going to happen is you're going to approach your vertical asymptote either from the left or from the right. It's going to go to infinity either positive infinity or negative infinity. Okay? So basically, that's it for my graph. I'm going to go through that same process, except for in this next one, I'm going to have a hole. So what I'm going to do, it's already factored. I cross out that hole. So I say I have a hole at x minus 4 equals 0, or when x is 4. There's a hole. I'm going to revisit this later. I'll come back and put that hole in in a little bit. But right now, I will do um, my zeros. 
Again, that happens when I set the numerator equal to 0. So I'm just going to go the 2x plus 2 equals 0. So that's 2x equals negative 2 or x equals negative 1. I'll find my y-intercept. That's when I do f of 0. That means I'm going to replace all of my x's with 0. And I can do it at any point, but I'm going to do it in my simplified form. So that's 2 times 0 plus 2 over 0 plus 3 which gives me two-thirds, um, so that these, this point here is negative one comma zero, this one is zero comma two-thirds, not negative two-thirds. <clears throat> then I'll do my vertical asymptote by setting my denominator equal to zero, the only one left is x plus three, and um, then I will do, so that's at x equals negative 3, and then I'll do my horizontal asymptote by taking the lead terms and doing the limit as x approaches infinity, lead terms 2x over x. When I do my limit, that equals 2. I graph that as y equals 2. Now I'll put that all together on the graph. Again, I don't want to forget my hole at the end. I'll show you how that works once we get it all put together. So I plot my zeros at negative 1 my y-intercept at two-thirds. I'll do my vertical asymptote at negative three. Do my horizontal asymptote at y equals two. I know that these two are going to connect, and I know it's going to approach over here, and it's going to approach um, the horizontal asymptote. Over in this left-hand side, I don't have any points in there, but I do know that it can't go on the bottom here because there's no opening for it. So it's not going to approach. I also know that because it is approaching negative infinity on the left and the denominator doesn't repeat itself, it's going to have to approach positive infinity on the right. And so that helps me get that spot. Now again, don't forget to put in your um, hole. And so what I do is I go to the graph and I approximate what 4 is. And I go right up on to the function. The hole is not on the coordinate plane. The coordinate plane is just a helpful kind of thing that sits there. The hole is right here, and so that's where I'm going to plot that zero, okay? All right, what I'd like you to do is to pause the video and then go through and um, see if you can find all the pieces on the next one, and then come back and we'll put it all together, because something a little interesting happens on this one. You're, this next problem, you're going to end up finding two vertical asymptotes and even two zeros. So you're going to have to factor um, and then... Uh, again, revisit this when you um, finish. Welcome back. I hope you gave it a try. This is what I did. I didn't find, I factored it. Um, two numbers that when I multiply them, I get positive 3. When I add them, I get negative 4. x minus 3, x minus 1. Two numbers that when I multiply them, I get negative 8. When I add them, I get negative 2. So that would be negative 4 and 2. Um, I didn't have any holes because there weren't common factors. I found my zeros by setting my numerator equal to zero. So I got three zero and one zero. I found my y-intercept by plugging in zero for x. So I got negative three eighths. I found my vertical asymptote by setting my denominator equal to zero. x equals four, x equals negative two. And then I found my horizontal asymptote by taking the limit as x approaches infinity. And so I got it down to the lead terms, x squared over x squared, reduced it down to one. Now I'm going to go ahead and put that all together. So I have a 0 at 3, 0. I have a 0 at 1, 0. I have a y-intercept at negative 3, or sorry, 0, 0, negative 3 eighths. Oof, split it, spit it out, right? Okay. Then I have a vertical asymptote at 4, and another vertical asymptote over here at negative 2. And then I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. Okay, again, this is one of those things where it's a little bit difficult to tell. But when I put this all together, I know what's got to happen. These points have to connect, and it's got to approach that asymptote. This is going to come up here, but it's going to have to swing back down and approach the asymptote here. Now, some people say, well, because it can't cross that horizontal asymptote. That's wrong. It can cross the horizontal asymptote. In fact, in the next one, you'll see that it does. But in this case, I know it has to come down because it's got an opening to come back down. 
and I know that it just, you know, it just is kind of the way it connects now when it comes to the other part. How do I decide the other two regions? I have a left region and a right region in addition to this middle spot. Well, in the left region, it can't go in this lower part because it doesn't have an opening to cross. If it could go in this lower part, it would show up as a zero over here, and I don't have one. So it's got to go up here. Also, because the numerator, or sorry, the denominator doesn't repeat, I know that if it went to negative infinity on the right-hand side of that asymptote, it's going to have to go to positive infinity on the left-hand side. And so then it's going to approach the horizontal asymptote. Same thing's going to happen on this other side. It's going to be that kind of looking thing, a swoop. I have a circle in my paper, sorry, or a hole in my paper, but you know what, I, you get the gist. It comes over here and continues forever and ever. Okay, I want you to do the same thing. Um, go ahead and pause the video and work through problem number four. See if you can find all the pieces, do all your factoring and all that stuff. And then once you find all the pieces, then come back, turn the video back on, and then we'll put it all together. All right, welcome back. So here we are. I factored, still nothing to cancel out, so I had no holes. I'm going to assign this negative to the top, so I'm going to set it on the top when I do my zeros. I set the top equal to zero. That's a negative one that would be assigned there. Well, negative one will never equal zero, so I'm going to cross that out. But I get a zero at negative nine and at one. My y-intercept at zero, negative one. I've got a vertical asymptote, so when the denominator equals zero at negative three and positive three, I've got a limit. Um, at, don't forget the negative goes in there. Again, I assigned it to the top, so I'm going to put it with the top. And so the highest power on top is a squared, and on the bottom is a squared, so y equals negative 1. Now that I have all of those things together, I can put them together on my picture, my zeros. Over here, negative 9 and 1, just about where they are, 0, negative 1. Turns out I have two um, vertical asymptotes at negative 3 and at positive 3, and just approximate about where they are. I also have a horizontal asymptote that crosses through negative 1. And like I said, that's okay. A horizontal asymptote, a graph can cut through a horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptotes only tell us end behavior. So it's going to approach it at the end. But in the middle, it can cut through it. So I know over here on the left-hand side, it's going to approach that, and it's going to rise to the top, again, because it's got no other way to cross through. Because it rose on the top, and I didn't have a repeating asymptote or repeating denominator. I mean, it, like if it was x plus 3, x plus 3, then it would have to go in the same direction on both sides, but I don't. I only have one of them. So it's going to go in the opposite direction, and it's going to connect. It doesn't have any place to come back down, so this one has to go up. It has to because I have no other place for it to turn around and come back through. It, that's the only place it can go. Well then if it rose up on the right hand side it's going to drop on the left hand side and again I can just finish that picture. Again I also know that it's not going to cross this axis because I don't have any spot opened. The openings would come in the form of zeros and I don't have an opening for it to cross. So my final picture. So keep in mind that you could get either sort of a parabola-ish looking thing in the center or a cubed function looking thing in the center. It just depends on what you have. All right, I want to talk through the last one. Um, this will be the last one that we do. Um, I just want to talk through this one because I want to revisit that hole again. I've got a hole at x minus 3. This one's all factored for us. So we can kind of go through our, our steps. Our whole happens when x minus 3 equals 0, so that's at x equals 3. Remember, this is the last thing I put on, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'll come back to it. Then I'll find my zeros when x plus 2 equals 0 and x minus 1 equals 0, because those are the two numerators that are left. That's at x equals negative 2 and x equals 1, so that's negative 2 comma 0 and 1 comma 0. I don't like that comma. Redo that guy. Okay. And then I'll do my y-intercept. Again, I can do it in the original, or I can do it in the in the broken down um, with or without the whole. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do f of 0 with 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 1 over 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 2. That gives me negative 2 over negative 2, or 1. 
So I have that at 0, 1. That's my y-intercept. Vertical asymptote happens um, when the denominator equals 0. So that's at x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. And my horizontal asymptote happens when I do my limit as x approaches infinity. Again, I'm going to look back at this. The highest power would be cubed on top. The highest power would be cubed on the bottom. And there's no number in front, so it's not like I have another factor of 2 or something in front. So that limit is 1. I graph that as y equals 1. So we'll go ahead and we'll put all of this stuff together. Oops, throw my pen around. Again, I'll put that all together. I'll do the whole last. My 0 is at negative 2, at positive 1. My y-intercept is at positive 1 as well. My vertical asymptotes are at negative 1 and positive 2. And I have my horizontal asymptote again at 1. It actually again crosses. And again, I know these two are going to connect. It only makes sense to drop on the left and rise on that, or you know, drop over here on the left-hand side of that asymptote, rise on the right-hand side of the other asymptote. Again, it's going to go in opposite directions unless I have a repeated denominator, which I don't. So that's going to go, and I know my last spot has to go here. I'll put my hole on the graph at x equals 3, and I am done with that picture. Um, so give your uh, 12, 4, evens or odds a try, see how you do. If you have questions, of course, ask me in class, and I will talk to you soon.